Good evening and welcome back to Byline here at Amherst Media, co-sponsored by the Amherst League of Women Voters. This is our public affairs show to give you a chance to get to know the legislators representing you on the town council and our newly elected representatives to Beacon Hill. And tonight our guests are the two district councilors from District 5, the district in which I live. And we want to welcome you, Shalini Bell Milne. I'm sorry, I got it very easily the first time, but... It's perfect. It's perfect. Okay, thank you. And Darcy Dumont, uh, welcome both of you for uh, this 30-minute uh, or so show in which uh, I'm going to throw some questions at you and give you as much time as possible so that the people uh, watching at home uh, and online can get to know who you are. So let's start with you. Um, 13 of the last 17 years, as I remember, you've been living in Amherst and you became a United States citizen three years ago. Congratulations. Thank you. And uh, you decided to run for town council. I Why? did. Uh, so there are many reasons for that. Um, in brief, uh, I feel when I started voting, I got more involved in the local politics and issues that were uh, very important to all of us. And uh, along the way, it struck me that when the new council was being formed, that I have certain skill sets um, that would be useful, especially as we're transitioning into a new form of government. Um, and, and I just felt like I could contribute and make a difference. Very good. And those three years when you were out of town in that period, what, uh, what were you doing then? Right, so I was uh, tenure track faculty at the University of Utah in the business school there. So I was teaching marketing Very and doing good. research. Great. And you're now affiliated with uh, the Eisenberg School? That's right. And you have a practice in mindfulness uh, here in town. And we're going to come back to that in just a minute, but let's ask okay. Darcy. So Darcy, uh, an activist, a teacher for roughly 20 years, a lawyer for at least 10 years or so, specializing in mental health uh, related law. Um, what brought you to the election? Uh, well, I, for the last six years, I've been volunteering uh, in town on climate and sustainability related issues uh, on a state level and, and to some extent on a town level. And um, uh, as we went after we voted to, for, uh, to form a new form of government. I uh, and we were preparing for uh, an election. I looked at the list of people who were running, and I th uh, I felt like it wasn't representing a broad enough swath of the community. And I thought that I would be able to contribute uh, my sustainability background to the list of people that were running. Mm -hmm. So. Um, so I signed up on the very last day at noon. <laughs> very last day at noon. And uh, so uh, your background in sustainability and climate change, you were active both in the community but also at the state level. And at the state level, you were working on statewide legislation along with a lot of other people. Uh, and you had some involvement in some resolutions and things here in town during uh, your pre uh, election service. Can you tell us briefly about that? Yes, I uh, again working with Climate Action Now and Mothers Out Front. I worked to help present the zero energy bylaw and the 100% um, renewable energy resolution and our fossil fuel um, uh, divestment resolution. And I also have been working with the multi. Uh, multi-town task force on community choice energy for the last year to try to um, figure out whether it's feasible for the town to adopt community choice energy, um, uh, a, a more progressive model that is um, uh, more focused on reducing greenhouse gases than other community choice energy models. Mm -hmm. Very good. So um, because you are uh, elected at the district level, 
Um, the people in your district probably know you much better than the folks in the rest of the town. So that's part of the point of this show is to help people come to know uh, more mm -hmm. about you. Uh, let's go back to mindfulness here, mm -hmm. uh, Shalini. Uh, could you talk a little bit about mindfulness and what that is and what that, uh, how does that influence or serve you as mm -hmm. a member of the council and how do you think it might help the council right. and its work? Sure. So just generally speaking, asking about what mindfulness is like asking what is life or defined love. So I will do my best. Uh, in its simplest form, mindfulness is having the ability to see things clearly uh, without letting our biases and our emotions hijack our thinking. Um, That's a very good, concise definition. Yes. And... Could continue. And, and uh, as you can see, it has many implications. It has so many benefits. Um, so that's, I mean, that's one of the reasons it's now being studied, researched in education, in politics, in business, the military. Uh, in the town council specifically, I mean, there are, again, so many benefits. Um, but one that immediately comes to mind is perspective taking. So I can be really attached to an issue and it's like so important. I really want everyone to uh, buy into that issue, for mm -hmm. example. And uh, in mindfulness, my training would require that uh, while I present that passionately and um, at the same time, I also listen, have the ability to truly, genuinely be curious of other people's perspectives. So that means my district people, the town people, what are, how are they going to be affected by this? So in involving their voices, perspectives, looking at research, what are the best practices in this? So I may think, based on my experience, this works. I believe everyone should be practicing mindfulness. Um, but I have to see what is the culture, what are people saying, what is the research, what are the best practices, um, you know, so we don't reinvent the wheel. So what is some research behind it? And then the third piece of it is then again stepping back and now looking at the bigger picture of what is the additional information I have and how can I, you know, work with that. So that I think is going to be, is very, very important. Um, should I go on with so, another one? Uh, okay. Let me play that back. Active listening, mm -hmm. integrating other people's thoughts mm -hmm. uh, into your own thinking as a conversation or a debate is going on, right. and then allowing those ideas and thoughts and different opinions mm -hmm. to uh, meaningfully influence your final decision and vote. Right. That suggests that sometimes you might change your mind right there at the table. Yes, and that can be seen as a negative. Oh, she's going back and forth. She doesn't have, uh, you know, she doesn't have a mind of her own. And I think that's the flexibility, which, which I hope people can understand, is that yes, as we gain more information, we might be willing to budge. And I think that's a good thing. That shows flexibility mm -hmm. and not. So through uh, through how you behave and act, since people will understand that you are influence driven, if you will, by mindfulness, they're seeing you practice mindfulness and maybe it will affect their behavior sometimes as well. Absolutely. Uh, just the way, uh, you know, anger and other emotions are contagious. You know, if mm -hmm. you're angry at me, my immediate reaction is going to be to defend myself. Yeah. And, and that did happen actually in the campaign where someone really challenged me on an issue which I felt was not fair. And I remember the first time I actually started defending myself. And then later on, again, that's part of the practice is to go back to that situation and contemplate. And I realized where was my curiosity there? Mm -hmm. And I fell into my default mode of defending my position versus engaging the person. Okay, tell me more. You know, what, how is this affecting you and what's going on? So and what people really want from their elected officials is to know that they're really listening to yes. them. Yes. They may not in the mm. end agree with them. Yes. But they're being heard. You're listening to me. Right. And it may or may not, it, it's going to be considered in my final decision. Right. Whether in the end I vote the way you want or not. But people right. would understand that that's the perspective you come to the table with. Yes, and then part of 
closing the loop would be to go back and explain, okay, I heard you and I see, but this is uh, the reasoning why. Very important. Um, why I decided, why you decided to, to go, go in the other direction. Right. Very good. Mm -hmm. So Darcy, you have a lot of diverse experience that you bring to the table as a former teacher, lawyer, activist. Um, how do you see yourself at the table con con contributing constructively to the work of the council, given your background that you're bringing to the table? There are only 13 of you. Mm -hmm. It's a small group with a big responsibility. Mm -hmm. How do you see your background and your experience contributing to the work of the body? Well, it is true that I've done a lot of different things um, career-wise. Um, and one thing I didn't mention was that I've also spent time being a grant writer. Um, so all of them contribute. Uh, the, the, I, I spent 20 years teaching part of it as an elementary school teacher and part of it as an art teacher. and. Um, in Holyoke, and I worked in three different buildings uh, with many different superintendents and principals. Um, and so I have the experience of, of um, a different type of building situations. Moving from building to building, um, I, was, I have experienced grade reconfiguration um, and have opinions about that. Uh, so that's relevant to our current school project, our, our current school proposal. And um, I also um, was a, a substitute during the, the year that I moved here. I substituted all around the area. And so I've actually taught in the open classrooms at uh, Fort River and Wildwood. So I understand the issues around the open classroom. I also substituted in Pelham Elementary School. So I understand a little, I have a picture of um, Pelham as far as regionalization with Pelham Elementary School. Um, so uh, I think I have a good understanding in general about class size um, and issues that would come up around the school, the schools. Um, as far as my, um, my grant writing, uh, I have had a lot of experience um, writing grants to uh, the state, cult Massachusetts Cultural Council, and uh, the local cultural councils and foundations. Mm -hmm. So I have somewhat of an idea about how to get money mm -hmm. Very good. <laughs> for projects, <laughs> how Great. to get money, um, which is you know, an issue that we may run into. And of course, my legal background is, um, comes in extremely handy because of all the uh, work we do, wordsmithing in the Ad Hoc Rules Committee, which I'm a member of, and, um, and in general, just understanding the charter and in all the work of the council. So I think that I, you know, the variety of uh, experience that I have is um, invaluable. It's, it's, it give, makes me a interesting member of the council. You can come at things from a lot of different mm -hmm. directions, that, it sounds like. That is absolutely and true. And are, are you a visual artist? I, I am, yes. And um, so what from your point of view as a practicing <laughs> mm -hmm. artist, does that bring to the table uh, as a member of the council? Well, I think that I, I highly value, uh, value the arts. Um, I would be a supporter of projects of the, um, the, the, the uh, Arts Commission. Um, I would like to see more public art in Amherst, mm -hmm. and I uh, hope that we can get funding mm -hmm. to to um, promote that. So I can almost mm -hmm. picture you sitting at the table in various debates and one minute you've got the lawyer's <laughs> hat on and the next subject you might have your education mm -hmm. hat on and then on another subject you um, might have your arts hat on, not just around arts policy questions but just the way an artist might think differently uh, a, 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 about a problem or mm -hmm. looking at a situation because I find a lot of artists are very, very creative. They think outside the box. They see things in different ways sometimes and have uh, ways of communicating that effectively to other people uh, in ways that they may not otherwise have, have noticed. I think that that's true. And I, uh, as I was trying to formulate what I was going to say today and thinking about how can I explain these different careers and what the thread is. I think a lot of it is that I have looked for, for careers in which 
uh, which do allow creative problem solving. Um, so all of the different things that I have done have involved um, sort of being able to think outside the box and being able to come up with some, some creative ideas. Great. So mm -hmm. let's uh, shift topics now. Let's talk about committees. You're helping to stand up a new mm -hmm. government. There's a lot of organizational work that has to happen. And uh, it starts with mm -hmm. being able to have reasonable rules and procedures for operating the council. Mm -hmm. And I understand both of you are serving on that ad hoc committee. Mm -hmm. So could you give us just a, uh, an idea or two of things that you're mm -hmm. thinking about sure. as you're working on forming these uh, these uh, potential uh, rules and procedures? Sure. Um, so uh, I think the Rules and Procedures Committee, the purpose is to codify all the relationships, um, you know, how we're going to do our business amongst the town councilors, the town council to the town manager, um, and the committee. So um, it, what I think many of us are doing is looking at other town councils and trying to um, find a way to operationalize our values. So that's the piece that I'm really interested in is like who, you know, what are the values that are important to us as a town? Uh, for example, uh, engagement or citizen engagement, transparency, um, inclusion, accessibility. So if these are the values, then how do we write our rules to make sure that those values are actually reflected in how we're gonna do our business? Right. Could you, yeah. uh, Darcy, give us an example of one thing that you're focusing on as a member of that committee? Because I want to make sure in the 10 minutes we have left that we get mm -hmm. to talk about uh, a couple of other things. Mm -hmm. uh, the, my particular assignment on the committee is mm -hmm. to look at um, public comment, uh, how different towns have, have uh, dealt with the issue of public comment, um, and, and even dialogue, because there are some towns like uh, um, Portsmouth, New Hampshire, that uh, that in every other meeting include uh, the possibility of a back and mm -hmm. forth between the public and the the council. Um, we are just looking at it to see if it, it is feasible, but um, and also the issue of where public comment should fit into the council. We've been hearing that that people would like to have it at the beginning of the council meeting. And also, um, perhaps uh, after each action item, uh, an opportunity to discuss after the council mm -hmm. discussed, give the public the possibility of discussing. We did that around the, the issue of the climate committee. We had a discussion session where the councilors discussed and then, then the public discussed. So seem to work out very well. And so we're just trying the different things out and, um, and listening to the public about they, what they want to. So let's shift to finance. You're sitting on the finance committee. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the most important things that the town council will do every year is to create a budget. Give us some thoughts right. about your thoughts about uh, serving on that committee and what, mm -hmm. how you're going to approach that job. Right. So the Finance Committee is pretty much doing the same role as it was doing with the town meeting, and so we are going to um, be the experts and try to become the experts, so we are a resource to uh, the town council on, on all financial matters, uh, which includes reviewing the budgets, the capital in expenditures, infrastructure, and, um, and unforeseen capital expenses. As an example, our first Finance, first two finance meetings were addressing the unexpected breakdown of a bridge in, our, in District 5, actually. And so that was an interesting thing for me personally mm -hmm. because I'm representing now the whole town and, you know, the responsibility of making sound fis fiscal decisions, but I'm also a representative of the District 5 residents. And uh, so it was, you know, looking at that from the perspective of how is this affecting the residents, listening to them, how is it affecting the businesses, the environment. For example, you know, I calculated based on numbers provided by Superintendent Mormon, um, uh, Superintendent of DPW, um, that there are 1,100 cars, and based on that, we over two years we would be traveling two million extra miles, and if the bridge was delayed by three years, we'd be traveling three million extra miles. Mm. So thinking of that 
aspect, the cost and then the environment. So, so there are all these different factors that we are uh, considering along with where is this money going to come from? Does it affect other projects? And so then, you know, making decisions, looking at it holistically. And the other piece that I think I'm interested in uh, participating and looking at is we focus so much on the expenses and I'd like to also look at the income side and look at what are some opportunities to um, that we're not really utilizing in our town to increase our revenues for example because that was a big concern of people the rising property taxes mm -hmm. and so, so I think very good and you mentioned uh, the environment there which <laughs> takes us to yeah. another committee that the two of you are involved in uh, Darcy you you and uh, Evan have been promoting and others have joined in on the council the idea of a climate and energy committee or an energy and climate committee and uh, you uh, are one of the authors of that could you talk to us a little bit about what your vision is for what that committee should be doing and what you're hoping it will create over time for our community. Mm -hmm. uh, a, a sustainability commit type committee has been in the works for more than a year now. The town manager suggested it uh, to the select board a year ago, and so it's it's been in discussion. And uh, now we have put forward a committee that was just created on Monday, uh, mm -hmm. uh, which. The purpose of this committee is somewhat narrowly focused on climate medi mitigation, meaning um, preventing the, the worst effects of climate change by reducing greenhouse gas emissions, and um, climate resilience, which means um, protecting from future impacts, protecting town residents uh, from the climate change that's coming in the next 10 to 20 years. Um, so uh, the vis the, it will be starting out um, proposing uh, goals along the lines of maybe the state goals or um, the goals proposed by the new 100% renewable uh, state legislation uh, to, to guide the town in implementing different programs and policies in order to reduce greenhouse gases and to provide resilience. Um, so uh, we're really excited about it. It was uh, uh, an initiative that was highly endorsed by the new president as a means to, to have our first act be an act of unity and one that's very positive that the whole council can get behind. And so I'm very excited about it. Um, I'm excited about um, uh, the people that it's going to bring together, um, that we have a wealth of expertise in town, uh, in the colleges, uh, and the university has many departments related to sustainability and the two colleges, the Hitchcock Center. Um, we have uh, a wealth of um, of expertise in our town. So as we are recording this show, which is probably about a month uh, uh, <laughs> ago, I realize um, that I shouldn't you say are, that. uh, that's fine, that's no <laughs> problem, but um, so uh, uh, the stage that we're in at this point mm -hmm. is fine tuning the charge and the vision mm -hmm. for, the for the committee. Right. And uh, Shalini, you're on that uh, committee as well right. uh, with Darcy and a few other counselors. Um, this is a, uh, um, uh, not a town council committee, if I understand correctly. Right. And there are going to be community members who will be able to apply to be on the committee, as well as a couple of councillors. Right. What's your mm -hmm. vision? Uh, do you want to add to what mm -hmm. um, Darcy said uh, with regard mm -hmm. to your vision for what this committee's charge should be? I think I would uh, add the perspective after again having spoken to several um, experts who have been working on climate change at the national level, even with the United Nations, looking at some of the best practices, like what are some other organizations doing, like in the United Nations, and what I, the consistent theme I've read is if you really want long-term change, um, we have to look at it from a whole systems thinking perspective. 
and look at how it's Im going to impact uh, the different communities of residents, uh, especially the underrepresented residents. How are these policies going to affect them or the businesses or um, education schools? And, and so because it's affecting these different stakeholders, it's important to have some way of including them and having their voice uh, part, part of this discussion. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and that would also ensure that we have the buy-in of the different communities. So it's really about getting everyone on board with this, uh, with this deep sense of real understanding that, mm -hmm. you know, when I'm solving this problem, I'm also looking at how does this affect you and to make sure it So it changes. sounds like this is going to build on the work of the past where a number of major policy decisions were made by the community mm -hmm. and are in the process of being implemented, but now you're looking at the next round of policy right. questions and issues right. and uh, how you involve the whole community in that conversation sounds extremely important. Mm -hmm. Also um, taking enough time to get it right. Yes. There's a certain sense of urgency because uh, of the effects of climate change. Right. Uh, that said, uh, we are in the process of standing up a government right. and that's going to take a lot of focus and work of the council. But on this other theme, right. there's also a sense of urgency because of the right. nature of the problems, right. but uh, uh, figuring out how to put together a robust plan mm -hmm. and how to phase that in to the work of the council and to the work of the government is going to be a big part of the challenge, I would assume, mm -hmm. because there are a lot of things going on all yes. at the same time. Absolutely. So I think we've uh, about run out of time. So I want to thank you both, mm -hmm. uh, Shalini and Darcy mm -hmm. from District 5, for joining us tonight. And thank you all for listening, watching. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you uh, need to see the show again, it'll be rebroadcast on Monday evening at uh, about 6 p.m., I think it is. And uh, we will uh, also have it available to you online. So uh, thanks for joining us, and I hope we'll see you again.